Hello to you, my fellow dark ones. How are you guys doing today? How's life? Did you know that in a few days, it's my channel's birthday? I didn't know that. YouTube told me. I didn't know that's something that we're gonna celebrate, but apparently YouTube thinks so. Anyways, as you guys remember, we need to start Ad Astra because we want to get the angel ring. And everything in Ad Astra starts with oil. This is an entangled bucket from Kibe, and we can just pick up the oil. Didn't know you can do that. Okay, much better. Oh, come on. What kind of a stupid ice is this? We should not click on the ice. The oil that I'm picking up goes directly into an ender tank, which this bucket is linked to. And I'm guessing it's full. Okay. Oh, come on. Underwater, you have a mimic. Now that we have the fuel, we should be able to make ourselves a fuel refinery. <laughs> Wait a minute. There's a quest line for Ad Astra. Why didn't it count? I have to make the book. Fine by me. I can make it and then throw it away. Normally, I think before making the fuel, you would make the rocket first. So here is a NASA workbench. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. And then we need to make the tier 1 rocket, which is made out of steel. And it's super cheap. I take it back, it's actually a ton of steel, but if I'm not wrong, this should be our tier 1 rocket. Thank you. For some reason, the game thinks that we need to breathe in space, so we have to make an oxygen loader. Again, it does require power. You just put water in and you will get oxygen out. Very slowly. For some reason, the quest book really wants me to have six buckets of oxygen, and I don't really understand why. So we're just gonna automate it for a bit. And in the meantime, we're going to make the tier one spacesuit. It's actually more expensive than I remember, but that is perfectly fine. It's not that horrifying. Oh, you can see my face. For very obvious reasons, we also need a launch pad. And if I'm not wrong, the sixth bucket should be ready. Yes, thank you. Can I put it back in? Why would you want me to craft something which I cannot put back? Well, you know the drill we throw it away. Instead, we're going to make actual oxygen tanks. And you know, charge those ones. Also the chest plate. We have five oxygen tanks, our chest plate is full, and I think that should be more than enough. So ladies and gentlemen, let us go to the moon. We add three buckets of fuel, and that's it. We're going to come back with a waystone. Yes, yes, we are ascending to heavens. So we want to go to the moon, obviously. Don't press shift. Hold space. Yes, we are slowing down. Oh, this is so slow. It's actually very hard to control. Is it nighttime? Yay, we're landing in a hole. Oh, it is nighttime. So over here, I think we're looking for Dash, which I did not think this true, but we might need night vision. Much better. Yes, Dash. We take some. I actually forgot that in the chests, uh, you're going to find nice loot. Not great loot, but decent. Yeah. A bit more dish. I would say that is a decent supply of dish. The base itself is not chunk loaded, but you might notice we're getting aluminium. Or processing is chunk loaded for some reason. Even if it's not enough, I do have a waypoint here. Don't you worry. We can sleep here. Now that we have dish, how do we process it so that we get the best yield? Okay, that works. That should give us a ton of dish, I guess. I have processed the dish. We don't need to upgrade our spacesuit, but I have refilled the oxygen and we just need to make the tier 2 rocket. So ladies and gentlemen, there you go. We need three more buckets of fuel and some garlic bread. And yes, we are ascending one more time. Oh, the copper is oxidizing. Finally. So again, the solar system. This time, the Mars. Hold space. Is it like exactly the same map? Yeah, I think so. But this time it's daytime. So we're good. Over at this beautiful red planet, uh, we're looking for Ostrom. And as usual, I forgot where to find it. Uh, where is it? Y level one. So it should be roughly here. Oh, yes, it's here. We have Ostrom. It's a bit more rare than Dish. Then again, maybe not. I mean, if you're looking at the correct level. Wait a minute, you guys drop slime balls, right? I don't have a slime farm. That's the problem. And I need it for pistons. I don't know what is happening, but that can't be good. Why did they spawn at the same time? And I don't have armor. <laughs> I forgot. It is true that we need more Ostrom than Dash because we also need to make the spacesuit, but I think this number should be more than enough. We just put a waystone and go home. I have my rocket, right? Yes. I am assuming Ostrom is also like Dash. We would be able to process it. On a very positive note, now that we have Ostrom, we're going to get better armor because this one is made out of netherite. Perfect. And I don't know if you can see it or not, but it's missing the back of my head. Anyways, a tier 3 rocket, some fuel, and we are going to ascend one more time. Oh, the copper is oxidizing. I know I have said that. I just wanted to reiterate. So this time, we go to Venus. I mean, you don't really have to hold space until you see the ground. <laughs> that scared me. Yes, we can breathe. So over here, we're looking for Calorite, which again, we would be able to find it at Y level 0. Oh, and by the way, the potions from Botania are glitched. It has two uses left, but it's like I have only used it once. You see, it didn't even change. I think I saw it. Yes. Calorites. That's what we want for the angel ring. You're friendly. No. 
The goats were friendly, not these guys. I like this one. I don't know how the Stargate TV series works because everybody's friendly there. Here, everybody's a jerk. But technically speaking, we have what we need. This time, it's not a great supply of Calorite. We only have one stack and literally one. But remember, we just want the engine. Oh, we take that one. It's on the surface. We take it. Now we have 69. We go home. Remember that we have done all of this in order to make the Calorite engine. So there you go. That goes inside the energizing orb. A 200 million RF. <laughs> okay. I guess it's creative flight, so it's fair. Yes, yes. Lovely. Ladies and gentlemen, the angel ring. And no, I'm technically a fallen angel. So if I remove my tiara, can I fly? No. Oh yes, it does. It was just glitched. A bit. For me, this is absolutely great because until today, I had to use 90% of my mediocre amount of mana on just being afloat. The Flugel Tiara is great for early game, but if you need consistent flight, it's not the best. Unless you have a super mana generation setup, which I haven't done that. Also, for some reason, I want to make a bridge, but I don't want to destroy that guy. Actually, I have been thinking, now that we have auto crafting, why don't we have a good setup for mana? I think I forgot what I had to do. Let us search for something very important. A TNT. Sure. Yeah, that's horrifying. <laughs> this is much nicer in a mixer. Yes, the recipe is the same, but you get two TNT. The main question is, is it going to be something incredibly fast or not? By incredibly fast, I just mean like fast. Yeah, I need better CPUs, but it's decently fast. Okay, I can live with that. It's just that our supply of gunpowder is not great. Um, Can we do something? I just want to see if it's possible to enchant a spike. No, shame. Well, there are ways, if necessary. Just in case you didn't know, entropinium is one of the best methods of generating mana. It actually gives you a lot, provided that you can give it enough TNT. Also a bit dangerous. Yeah, you see, we got some mana. End of flame, on the other hand, is not the best. It's gone. Already. The automation for this, I think it's going to be super easy. We're going to use applied energistics and we are going to need an energy acceptor. Yes, this is the center. I do have a few entropiniums on both sides, a block of redstone, a Gaia mana spreader and a mana pool with a recessive augment. I don't know if you can see it or not. Basically, what we're going to do is that we're going to have an ME formation plane, an interface, and then we put the TNT in and run away. Yep, it's working. You can see the mana. The problem is how to stop it. Because you know, entropinium is going to gather the power of the explosion and it's going to convert it into mana. If all the mana pools are full, well, the explosion is going to happen, which is no bueno. So whenever the mana pools are full, we need to detect it so that we can stop this process, which is something super easy. We just need to have a comparator. Well, this one is empty, obviously. But if you put it next to a mana pool, it will tell you that it has mana. In order to have some wireless redstone, I think what we're going to do is that we're going to use the red string comparator. This is an item from Botania and it's not very complicated to make. And what it does is that you place it down. Do you see that red dot? You put your wand on function mode and you want the dot to face the mana pool. So what does it do? First off, it's wireless, so you can block the connection, but it's still connected. Secondly, instead of reading a comparator signal out of the mana pool, you can read it out of this guy. I think it's very handy, and we want to be able to read something from this mana pool. It doesn't really matter, it can also be that one. Yes, I think we are connected. Yep, to the mana pool. I really wish it was one block lower. It's fine. Later on, we'll find something to cover it. You cannot turn off a formation plane with redstone, but you should be able to turn off an import bus if you give it a redstone card. So we want you to be active without a signal. That is good. And here is your signal from the comparator. I think it should work. No, this is uh, not connecting. It's fine. We have janky redstone. We cover it with carpet or something. Over at our base, we are going to have an entangled chest with an export boss. We are going to have a crafting card so that it's going to craft TNT and export it into the entangled chest. And the problem with these chests is that uh, they don't really open up, but uh, yeah, we're getting it. So now if we put it under the import bus, we should be fine. Yep, it works. Also, this is a new update. Uh, you don't hear the explosions. Maybe you do. No, you don't. But technically speaking, we're done. Oh, do you know what? <laughs> you need a comparator. My bad. Uh, this is not going to emit a redstone signal on its own. I have cleaned up most of the items that we had over here. I have transferred all the mana. I have added more mana pools so that we have more reserve. And the only thing which worries me is that are you going to stop if you get a redstone signal? Yeah, exactly. You do. So I think we're good. We have a lovely mana generation setup. That means I would be able to upgrade the Terra Shatterer and upgrade it much faster. Also, it doesn't really matter which comparator signal we read because uh, both of them are identical. So don't you worry, the other one is not going to explode. Anyways, you're now a tier B. That was a lot of mana for just B. So it's not going to have a huge radius. Yeah, it's just a 3x3. Three three. Fine by me. 
I have to wait for more mana, that's it. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to need more Gaia Spirits, so... Yep. Okay. We got a rose! Yes, as I have been saying, we need more Gaia Spirits. And since I no longer have my mountain, we're gonna do it here, next to the beach. It's far more cheerful. I just wanted to check if there are any obstacles. Apparently, there are no obstacles. We have him. Again. We do a crazy amount of damage. Well, if something goes wrong, we always have the hearts. We can eat them to regen health. That was probably the easiest one I ever had. Let us see how tier 2 is going to be. This is going to be our first one. I should have let my armor to recharge. Okay, we're taking damage. I don't have armor anymore. The mini orange heart saved my life. Perfect. Uh, so what do we get? The worst one. Well, you know what I'm looking for. I'm looking for the Ring of Odin, so we have to do this fight a few more times. But we should have enough mana to do that. It's fine. Yeah, I think we're gonna survive this. Thank you. See you in a bit. Well, I got my Ring of Odin. We don't have extra ring slots. I don't need that one. But very good. We have 10 extra hearts. Since we are also using the Terra Shatterer, I don't mind the Ring of Thor. Oh, it's now more green. It's not blue. Shame. For me, that was fun, but we do have the Ring of Thor. It was the last one, literally. And I upgraded the Terra Shatterer to tier A. We have to upgrade it to tier S for a quest. But with the Ring of Thor, how much do you dig? Quite decent. It's just that every time I come here, I forget how to get out. Ah, yes, there is a torch. Now that we have the quarry, it's a bit silly, but I want to go mining. Okay, so this must be the largest structure I have ever made and I have no idea how to finish it. Do you know how much detail it's going to need? Just as a comparison, it's actually bigger than everything else I have made so far combined. So yeah, it's gonna be a challenge. Well, it is the next day for me and let us face it, there is no way in this universe I can finish it in one episode. It's too big. And yes, I do understand that it looks weird, so for the moment, we just stick with weird until I can finish it. Because the problem is that I ran into additional problems. Uh, the quarries that we had uh, used to work at a very garbage speed, correct? This is a bronze drill and the speed was supposed to be... worse? Ah, the quarry warms up. Okay, that's the problem then. I was confused a bit. Anyways, I was under the impression that we're going to get ores at a very garbage speed. This speed is too much. Well, for one quarry, it's fine. But if we have four quarries, it's not fine. You see the problem? I have a huge backlog. So I believe one thing that I should definitely start doing is to redo our entire ore processing and uh, add more machines. Also, power generation is kind of garbage with the solar panels. So I was thinking maybe we should go with something else. It's not going to be something super amazing, but I don't really have that many choices. I don't really want to use power. Yeah, I think we are going to go with something like a thermal generator. It's like a magmatic dynamo. Oh, you give it lava, it gives you power. And it's not that bad. Well, my assumption is that it's not that bad. We need to try it first. Lava lasts for a while. That's good. We go with this one. Also, one thing that we should definitely try and do is to upgrade the blast furnaces to the final tier, which requires chrome. I just had a very small accident. I was trying to clear up some ground and unfortunately, I harvested most of my controller. It's really fun because you have to configure every single P2P tunnel one more time. The reason that I did this is our ore processing and I think what we should do is that we should hook it up to our applied energistic system as well. So we need to have a quantum ring. And one thing that I'm not really exactly sure of is that can we cheat with a sink? You know, instead of giving it 256,000 cobblestone, we just give it water. It works in forge. I don't know if it works on fabric. Things are a bit weird here. So here is a condenser. We need a 64k ME storage cell. And one of my problems is this. I need to have a certain measure of items at all times. Apparently there is a request table from Applied Energistics. Let's see if it works. No. Let's do one stupid thing at a time. So here's the sink, a pipe. We put you on singularities and a servo. Uh oh, you don't do that. Where am I going to get 256,000 cobblestone? Well, that's just lovely. I just had to make a pattern for the highest tier of cobblestone generator and we needed some lava. So I hooked up an ender tank. And can we make the netherite version? Yes, we can. That was expensive. Yeah, a bit expensive. I think you need 256 of cobblestone generator mark one in order to make the highest tier one. Well, that's just awesome. But we have it. So just out of curiosity, if we put you here, are we getting cobblestone? Yes. I think we still have a few free channels here, so condensed matter for me. Yeah, it could take some time, 
but at least we're doing it. Life is always great when you don't have enough cobblestone to make a cobblestone generator. It's okay, I have plenty in my tank. Well, it's not going great, we're still out of cobblestone, but I added one more cobblestone generator down here and uh, over time we should get it. The first one is almost ready, I meant for the other ones. In the meantime, we should get our quantum ring itself. And the chamber. We're almost there, yes, we have it. Uh, so for the moment, uh, you stop exporting cobblestone and let's see how fast we're actually getting it. It's not that bad. So in the recent version of AE2, you don't need to use the dust, you can use an ender pearl. It was in the JEI, so let's see if it works. Yes. It worked. This is the wireless technology of applied energistics, meaning that you have to start making a very simple multi-block structure, like so, connect it to your controller, put one of your quantum entangled singularities inside, and as the output, you will have another ring with the other quantum entangled singularity. And obviously, if you give it power, they are connected now. You can see the particles. Also, you can extract the channels from the big ones, not the small ones in the corner. This link works like a cable, meaning that you can have your P2P tunnels before it or after it. So a cable goes directly into our quantum link, and if I have another cable here, I can have a P2P tunnel over here too. Or I can have it before that, but it's not important. Well, I guess the important thing is, let us upgrade our machine casings first. I have already set up the pattern, so yep. We're missing some. It's fine. We have the dust. And this one can cook it for me. Another thing that you might notice is that over here we have different colors of cables and that is because uh, they resemble different processes. Since I also want to use my applied energy six system and I don't really want it to be messed up with ore processing, uh, I think we need to continue with the tradition. We just pick like two colors and roll with them. Magenta and why the hell not? Green. I also think, yep, we have enough chrome. That means we should be able to upgrade the machine casings to get a higher heat and also process tungsten steel. Another thing that one of you guys have been telling me and I'm hoping it's accurate is that uh, when you have this multi-block, you can have four blast furnaces, which actually makes a lot of sense. Yeah, it's a multi-block, even though we have two of them. That saves a lot of trouble because I have a lot of multi-blocks. Thank you. That was lovely. It's just that I need more chrome. Yeah, each three rubies gives you a bit of chrome. And yeah, we will not have enough. We go with one for the moment. Seems I have made a friend and now I don't want to get rid of him. <laughs> Why did I have to fit him? <laughs> it's okay. You stay with me. Anyways, I think I'm finally done and this time it actually took me far less time. Maybe two hours or something? And that is for two reasons. One of them is that some of the activities are now being handled by our main base. And the second reason is I don't have access to all the ores. Last time, if you guys remember, I actually went mining and we had tons of different ores. This time, we're just getting the ones from the quarry. But basically, we have eight blast furnaces, which I think it's an overkill in two multi-blocks. The magenta one is hooked up to our main base. The green one is ore processing. I also did the same thing with the centrifuge and it works. Also, these generators are not that bad. Do they accept overclockers? I don't know, for a second I thought maybe you do, maybe you don't. I don't know. But we are banking it anyways. It's not something super fancy. The main thing that we're doing is that we're just doing a ton of filtering. That's it. And I mean a lot. Depending on how many more ores we get, there are going to be more filters, but that's not a problem. The applied energy six from our main base is actually handling everything which has to do with aluminium and different ingots that we have to cook inside the blast furnace, as well as providing water to the grinders. And I was hoping if we manage to set up the quarries over here, we can also provide them with steam because that one is kind of out of place. Yes, yes, please teleport, it's faster. We just want to bring him home and sit here. Thank you. Uh, I put the advanced hatches on auto crafting so that we would be able to upgrade the other quarry as well. And do you see how many stupid patterns I have? Look, it's just crazy. Yeah, 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 have some fish. I do have a feeling that eventually we are going to have five quarries, uh, four of them for ores and one of them for oil. So we're just gonna put them next to each other. Since we have a connection to our main base, we would be able to export steam. So you should be getting steam. Yes, very slowly. And I think one more thing that we would be able to do is to have another export bus, a crafting cart, and we're just gonna auto craft and export drills. That's it. Oops, that's not the drill. You're the drill. Yeah, and then everything automatically goes into this entangled chest. Oh, and most importantly, uh, the upgrade so that it works faster. I hate mobs. I really do. Perfect. We're getting the garbage. I just have to bring you back over there as well. And then we're done. However, now that the quarries have warmed up, we're actually losing steam. So maybe very soon we have to make a massive boiler. Before doing that, I want to try and assemble the blast furnace from modern industrialization. I am going to place it down in the basement because I have no idea how many of them we're going to need. For the moment, we're just going to have the one. The issue is that we have reached a point where villagers are not being productive enough. So I need more steel. And I think this is the best way, hopefully, if you finish it. So we want it to be medium voltage. 
You don't go there. Oh, you're an output hatch. Okay. Energy input hatch. Now it works. It's never a good thing that you're crafting something and you have two extra coils in your inventory. But the structure is fine. Okay. I honestly don't think it's going to be that fancy or that complicated. All we have to do is to have a pattern provider. You go on the input hatch. We're going to export steam as usual. So you go in and honestly speaking, that should be it, right? Yeah. Oh, and in the output hatch, I have an entangled chest. Also, probably next episode, we have to start making these upgrades. They're useful. I have been checking the recipe and it seems this is a very good recipe. You just need one carbon and four iron. And that gives you four steel ingots. We are getting steel. That's not bad. Okay, moving on. There has been a few requests. Our dearest friend, Mr. Roach King. He also wanted to have a fridge, which I'm hoping it's supposed to be full of food. So here are some spider eyes and fermented version. Enjoy the food. Then it is the turn of my dearest Aditya, a, a coffin surrounded by flames. I was going to use the thing which looks like liquid death, but uh, it's very bad. And I'm really scared it might get out of control. So fire it is. Just before I forget, apparently I have also made a very small mistake, a Riri was not Mr. Riri. I'm very sorry, Baroness. I'm hoping this is going to be more acceptable. Next, we have Arya who asked for a grave that I will never ever visit. So yeah, you're with a centipede. I'm just gonna cover it so that it doesn't get out. Frozen, King of the North, buried in blue ice, and our dearest Lord Queen. I know he likes Pepsi. Uh, I couldn't find one. So here is a block of coke. I'm sorry, I couldn't find anything similar. Next on the list, we have Mr. Great Zerby with a turbine from modern industrialization. Then we have Matthew with a backwards gravestone, tinted glass, redstone lamp, and skeletons six blocks lower. Very specific. I have to make another visit to the mine cells dimension, so I think the rest of you have to wait. But I did make a few more. We have Ronnie, we have Andreas, and Permusen. He asked for a pink flower. That was not my idea. Then we have Daniel. I'm hoping this is what you asked for. I'm running out of corpses. That's the problem. I was not paying attention to time, and apparently we're out of it. So it's time to wrap up the episode. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoyed it. Till the next one. Bye bye.